Hello everyone and welcome to our Circle and Salve Women. For today we are going to talk about my article, How to Stand Against Trials and Tribulations. And you know, it's interesting because in, in life, in relationships, you really end up having to take in some comedic things that are happening around you to just have a moment of revival. I would like to think of it. It's just a means of, of connecting and thinking to yourself. You know what? We're going to be just fine. And so the two stories, short stories that I shared in this article was the first one was this elderly couple and they had been in their 80s or so and a police was brought in to investigate as to the matter of this t conflict or altercation that they ended up having in the home where the the wife ended up having like hit her spouse or husband with a wooden object <laughs> how it ends up is very shortly they forgot what they were talking or arguing about and i just thought to myself you know my husband and i think you just have to laugh because you know, for us we had been together at a very young age and just recently we were at a dinner with amongst very wonderful great spirited people and you know it's interesting because most of them were husband and wives for quite some time but when you tell them that you have been together essentially for over 30 years they look at you and, and you forget even though they're just to give and take about the same age as you not all of them married very young and so they look at you and it's just it gives them that I, I would like to think that inspiration at the same time awe but you know that hope of you know what if they can do it or they're doing just fine they seemingly are happy and so forth you know I mean you get to a point where you're just joking around with your spouse and everybody knows, you know what, they're safe. They're totally fine. And yet there's no total guarantee of what will be tomorrow. And I would always like to think of it as just like you go to bed asking yourself, you know, have I done well today? And did I, maybe I didn't give it my hundred, but am I okay with what I gave? And did I live it to the fullest that I was able to? And that I have a good say about it where I can look and go, you know, I accomplished something today and it may have not been as much as I wanted to or as as great as I would have wanted to or the impact that I would have wanted to make and yet I made a mark and it was a good mark and so therefore I can get to bed and feel like we can then face tomorrow yet another day and you know in my first few years of marriage sometimes I remember just like <laughs> the other comedy that I had talked about or written about in this one was, you know, the secret of long marriage or a long time together. And the husband says, well, you know, we just don't talk about or sweat the small stuff pretty much, right? In, in more or less words. And he had mentioned that just the other day, I asked my wife to please pass the salt. And then she responded, you know, <laughs> something like, you ruined my life, leap. <laughs> So I thought to myself, my goodness, you know, you have feelings where you just think to yourself, let me just take a nap or let me just uh, go to bed and think about this and do this better tomorrow because you know you love with your heart. And yet sometimes you're feeling some kind of way. And I treat this, I didn't mention this in this one, but I treat this like Monday. And I joke around at school because I always say to myself, you know, it's funny because Monday is just like a Friday. When I stayed at home, didn't know the difference. And now it's like as if you treat Monday like a relationship and you say to it in your mind, like, it's not you, it's me. I just like Friday better. And it's interesting because sometimes you're feeling that some, that just some kind of way where your your spouse your partner could say hello to you or good morning I love you and then it's like you know in my younger years or my earliest years it was like I was picking a fight I was looking for something to feel unworthy about you know and that's very strong but what I'm saying is like yes you know that you are something of unique special means in this world and you have you know you're an advocate for yourself and so you're all so with that sometimes you're somewhat begrudging because you feel like Maybe, and I look back reflectively, you see and have, have felt or have experienced others who have like caused a fight for no reason. 
And then all of a sudden that creeps up inside of you. And then you're like looking at your, your, your partner and then you're somewhat reflecting that type of emotion and perhaps a displacement of a recall, something that triggered inside of you to then all of a sudden want to cause any type of friction. And it's, you know, unnecessary, of course, unwanted. And yet you see it happening, you see it transforming into what, you know, an, an escalation of something that perhaps you had not even anticipated yourself. And yet there it is. And then you're handling it. And, you know, you look back and go, what was that about? You know, and so in the three decades that I've been with my husband, it's amazing, because he's amazing. And I know he's told me many times, I'm amazing. And there are just times when you just look back and sometimes your mind thinks back to the times where you didn't feel so amazing or that you didn't feel that he was so amazing and you just have to kind of step out of that and say to yourself what am I doing you know there's no guarantees and I can honestly say that if, if this is a statement that I have taken out biblically and other readings that I have had as well is that there's really true no guarantees of what tomorrow will be you know and just you can plant a pretty picnic but you can't predict the weather and so it's, I, I know it comes, from, oh my goodness, the song that I would always sing in the past, you know, and it's just so interesting because you realize that the more you run into it and you know, how many birthdays I have I planned out, how many occasions have I planned out and I have played it over, over my head and same thing with lessons plans in my classroom. You know, the thing is, is that you plan ahead of every blueprint that you possibly can, that you can see that would transpire into your day. And so that your craft, your preparedness is really how are you going to react to the unanticipated, to really the things that you were weren't saying to yourself, this is going to happen. This is in between this moment, this is going to happen. It's just not going to be that way. There's always going to be balls thrown at you. And then you just have to know how to dodge them, how to catch them, how to throw them back. And so with that sa said, you know, I I'd like to think that even though there are people who have come to that experience, just as I have and you have, where they will say, well, you know what? Here comes that five-year itch or that's five to seven years. You know, my husband and I used to talk about that. And then all of a sudden you pass that and you go, huh, okay. Okay, this wasn't so bad. And then all of a sudden you have like, you know, 16 years. I recall a neighbor, wonderful neighbor who ended up ending their marriage, you know, after I think it was 16 years of being together. And she had recall or just made a statement, a very innocent one, but a very true to the matter, you know, where she had said, you know, you guys are coming up pretty close. And I was, I, there was no fear of me. It was more like such a detachment because that was her life. And that's what she was going through. And it's not to say that the spouse was a terrible person in my eyes, never wronged my husband and I. We're always great to our children, both of them. And it was just more of like, you could see that they were just going their separate ways. And I know that from the last time we've seen her, she's happy to have moved on. And so, you know, it's just, that's just how it is sometimes. You, you, you look back and go, well, at least we had a memory with them together and you you could share that part and you know all of a sudden you're going into like your 25th and you're just like <laughs> did a decade pass and now we're on to our 25th and then there are people that once you start to pass it they go you know you know, my parents never made it to their, through their 29th or they left each other at the 29th and you know for me when you have seen some people I think to myself well you know what there are times where physically you might have been together for, let's say, 25 years, but you also have really exemplified a, a way of how to cause conflict, how to cause such a turmoil in a relationship that it was just a matter of time where then you already said, okay, I'm done with this. I'm going to go and I'm going to walk away. And when you see that sadly happening, unfortunately, you say to yourself, that was that was something that was not a surprise because when you guys were together, you did everything you could to try and prove that you weren't meant to be. And I think that's the piece that is the biggest challenge because 
man, you know, the togetherness and relationships and marriages are so beautiful, you know, and it really is this holy matrimony that you can really look back. And I, and I always visualize myself being in my eighties and looking back with my husband and just laughing away of all the many things that we thought were so serious. And I know with all of our trials and tribulations that we will have traveled because we have already traveled some and have overcome so many that you all of a sudden, you know, can look back and go, you know what, that wasn't so bad, even though the wave seems so strong at that very moment and it was going to topple over us and take us down you, you you can be strengthened by it all and go okay but now I've been trained to know that you can overcome that and I really really see myself pursuing in that level of wisdom and I know that when I would sit there and listen to people there, you know, as a child, I would look to the elderly and I would look at them and think to myself, how, how will I have become this, you know, this, the, not ju just this, this model of wisdom and you know, just to look at people and go, one day I'm going to speak like you and I'm going to have so much to give to this world and I'm going to be able to calm the world and give them peace because if you say it with so much just you know a, a, a portrayal of just overcoming and I think that the world would not be so in fear of whatever is to come. And that's how I look at it. You know, you just, you create that superpower from your own experiences. And so I think to myself, like relationships go through a lot of tests, but just like in anything, many times, if not all the time, I would like to think the best entry require the greatest challenge. And I look at my spouse and, and, you know, the thinking of the partnership we have with our five children. And we have done such amazing things. And it's not to say that we're going to stop now because it seems that the more we overcome, the more we feel like we can do more. It's like, you know, you start off with the three pound weights and then you go to five pounds, you go to 10 pounds. I mean, realistically for me, I know that when it comes to, you know, lifting weights, I know that it will bulk me up and it just automatically. And so I know where it is where I need to train myself and steady myself so that I can maximize on the toning and not so much the bulking, but it's about what you want. It's what about, it's about what you want to achieve. And in life sometimes you want to go bigger sometimes you just want to be toned and trimmed and just to be steady and maintain maintain and so it's really about setting a goal in the beginning and sticking by it and sticking to it regardless of what people will say they will attribute in the means of what they've experienced what they know and you know everyone has ceilings as I have told my own you know, my own children and my own students it's like a no just is just a word, you know, that that's the worst that people can say to you, but you can at least try. And I know that my children have seen me, you know, ask and in ways where they're like, mom, you know, of course, because naturally they get embarrassed because you are who you are. But there were times where you did things, you know, subconsciously to prove to them that beyond that, though, there was nothing to fear and, you know, to get to the other side. And it's important because you don't always have to speak what it is that you know is be, is evolving from it all. You just know that what they will see and perhaps what they may not understand right away, but can then really be immersed in it and then just subject to the matter later on and be able to reflect and go, oh, I get that now. And perhaps hopefully more than what you were hoping to really plant into their, the, to the meaning. And I, I realized that, you know, my papa, my mama, and then all of the elderly that I, even, even Miss Connors, my librarian, I mean, when I was in elementary and then going into junior high as a library assistant and then by the time I was in high school I was at a public library and being a library assist uh, or a library uh, aide in the downtown library I mean it was every it was everything that I could do to really learn about the world and not just books as I was putting them away but really the experiences that I was gaining from seeing just the insight that you really filled your heart your mind your body and see your spirit with of what was going around and I really truly understand that now you know of 
relationships and what people say to you, the best you can do is listen. It doesn't mean that you have to follow. You are listening to what people are saying because they are reflecting off of their own experiences, their own mindset, their own thought process of how they were able to resolve. If they ever did come to some kind of a resolution with anything, any challenges that they've had in life, did they did they fight? Did they flight? Did they freeze? And how would you have you know, acted out in that manner? How would you have addressed yourself in that situation? And I always think to myself, you know, and it's interesting because I didn't mention this again in my article, but, you know, I used to, when I was at the library in downtown library, I would read about certain crime. I mean, I still have crime books or so. And, you know, it was just because I wanted to understand why people do what they do. And as the same thing as my husband, I would fold clothes and I was, you know, what I would stay at home or so. And I would wash to show I believe that the title was snapped and he would joke and say I don't know if you should watch that and I would say and I would joke back and go yeah it's a moment of healing <laughs> you know and I, I never saw myself in that mentality of that trauma of thinking oh my goodness you know I could totally plot this out this terrible you know but I would put myself in the position from the time I could recall of seeing why people do what they do and then ask and then asking myself perhaps in a forgiving kind of mentality of really seeing why you know in reading through it i'm reading a, a book here recently that i will share where really you're just, the atrocities you know you're just like in disbelief but then you push through and you say to yourself i must read this to truly understand so that i can learn and grow from it and i think that's everything with relationships you just have to listen to what people have to say and it's a reflection of where people have come from. It's a reflection of their own fears, their own doubts, their own self-awareness, and perhaps their own contemplations and lack of confidence or full of confidence, whatever it may be. But you take it in and you, you put it together, you roll it up like a ball, and then you throw it inside of you and ask yourself, what part of that could I take into positivity, into light, and then therefore grow from it? Because ultimately at the end of the day, you are a, you are your true self. That masterpiece within you has already been created. What you put in is really that entire makeup of just that that spirit, that soul that's within you of your heart, your mind, your body, and your spirit and saying, but then how can I illuminate all of this? How can I then create this like, it's like, you know, how I'm gonna say this is like, it's like a lampshade. A lampshade's only a lampshade unless you plug it in and turn it on the light. And so you could sit there and be a lampshade, but you're really taking in all that energy and all of that positivity you possibly can. And, and you know, the negativity, you're like, mm, don't want that, don't want that, don't want that. Because I truly believe that the more wattage you have to then illuminate when you're taking in right. And so let people talk around you. They have a lot to say. But that doesn't mean you have to start to migrate into that direction. It is about what you believe you want. So you have to know what your goals are in your relationship and anything. I mean, you could expand that to many aspects of life and just know you're going to be fine, you know, and there's no guarantees of what tomorrow will be. But if you already have made a goal to finish and finish strong and finish with great laughter, then you're going to get to love. You're going to get to live. You're going to get to laugh. But first, you have to relax, breathe and let go and just really know that life is good and that, that love is so wonderful and that you're going to get to laugh at the end and no matter what. So in the words of my mother, God bless us all. I hope I gave you some entertainment today of just truth and just being real and let's just go about life doing the best we can. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.